guys welcome back to tech dose and in this video we will look at core schedule 4 problem which is from lead code number 1462 a prerequisite before watching this is to watch my video on floyd warshall showing how to find all pair shortest path so the link will be in the description below so now i will assume that you know the floyd warshall algorithm now in this case uh, there are a total of num courses courses you have to take labeled from 0 to num courses minus 1 you are given an array prerequisites where prerequisites at i ai comma bi indicates that you must take course ai first if you want to take course bi for example the pair 0 comma 1 indicates that you have to take the course 0 before you take course 1 the prerequisites can also be indirect if course a is a prerequisite of course b and course b is a prerequisite of course c then course a is a prerequisite of course c you are also given an array queries where queries at j equals ui ji for the jth query you should answer whether the course uj is a prerequisite of course vj or not we need to return a boolean array answer where answer at j is the answer for the jth query so if you look at the first example then in this case uh, we are given two courses as you can see num courses equals to 2 and the prerequisites is 1 comma 0 that means one is a prerequisite of zero so there is a relationship between one and zero and this is a unidirectional relationship and that is why we are using a directed edge here the queries are given as is zero a prerequisite of one well it will be false because from zero there is no edge to one right so there is an edge from one to zero that means one is a prerequisite of zero but zero is not a prerequisite of one so this will be false is one a prerequisite of zero yes you can see this will be true and that is why the answer is false comma true now if you look at the second example uh, then in this case you are given two courses but the prerequisite is empty so for all of the prerequisite queries it will be false because we do not have any prerequisites right we do not know anything about it now if you look at the third example in this case we have three courses and the prerequisite is one is the prerequisite of two so there is an edge from one to two one is a prerequisite of zero and two is a prerequisite of uh, zero as well so if i ask you a query that is one a prerequisite of zero so you need to see if there is an edge from one to zero or you need to see if you can traverse from one to zero right now if you ask about is one a prerequisite of two so you can traverse from one to two so yes one is a prerequisite of two now i hope you have understood uh, the problem in the constraint section you can see that the number of courses are less than equals to 100 that means even if you write an n-cube algorithm this will be approximately 10 to the power of 6 and this will be fine if you look at the prerequisite size it is saying n times of n by 2 this means that uh, it will be order of n square so you can assume that the prerequisite will be around 10 to the power of 4 the prerequisite length each of them will be saying a pair that means ui comma vi so that it will be saying that ui is a prerequisite of vi and for the pair ai vi ai will never be equals to bi so everyone will be a valid pair ai bi are all unique and the prerequisite graph has no cycles the queries length is 10 to the power of 4 and you see that ui is not equals to vi even in the queries that means we are not asking uh, for anybody like if 0 is a prerequisite of 0 this will indicate a self loop if zero is a prerequisite of zero it will be a self loop so the graph do not have any self loop now let's see how to solve this problem now before we actually start the solution uh, we have to just think about why this is a graph question because we are defining relationship between the entities so whenever uh, we have to define relationship the relationship is well defined by in terms of edges and the entities will be taken as the vertices now the relationship can be of two types there will be a bi-directional relationship and a unidirectional relationship so if you look at uh, why it is a directed graph then if zero is a prerequisite of one then this does not mean that one is a prerequisite of zero it has to be explicitly said otherwise it will not be assumed and that is why whenever the bi-directional assumption is not allowed that means if unidirectional relationship is what we are looking for then we will always make directed edge and so the graph will be directed graph and if we look at the bi-directional relationship then those type of uh, edges will be undirected and so the graph will be undirected graph okay now let's look at the first approach which is the dfs approach now let's look at the example number one where we have just two nodes 0 comma 1 so this is the adjacency list uh, which you can just make by traversing through the edges 
once you have made the adjacency list these are the queries so if you look at it it is the first query is asking if zero is a prerequisite of one so what you need to do is uh, start from zero start the dfs traversal you can do dfs or bfs both will be similar right so you can apply any of them so if you apply dfs from zero then if you can reach to one then that means you will return true that yes zero is a prerequisite of one but if you cannot reach to one then uh, you will say that it is not possible that means zero is not a prerequisite of one for the second example is one a prerequisite of zero start your dfs or bfs from this node one and you cannot reach to zero that means one is not a prerequisite of zero okay so we will be returning false for this now if you look at the second example in this case uh, we are having a graph having six nodes from zero to five and this is the adjacency list representation of the given graph you can just traverse through the edges and make it now in the prerequisite question if i ask if zero is a prerequisite of one then you apply the dfs from zero and you have to just traverse it and see if you can reach to one then you will be returning true similarly is two a prerequisite of one start a dfs call from two and see if you can uh, find one if you can find return true now in this case is three a prerequisite of zero start a dfs call from this three and see if you can reach to zero so yes we can reach to zero so we will be returning true now is three a prerequisite of two start a dfs call from three and if you can reach to two then you will return true is five a prerequisite of four so you do a dfs call from here and see if you can reach to four and so you return true but if i ask you is five a prerequisite of one then you do a dfs call from one and you will only be able to explore four so you cannot reach to one so this will be returning false right so this can be solved by the traversal technique either dfs or bfs and you know that if you use a visited array in this case then the dfs will take order of v plus e time where v is the number of vertices e is the number of edges the number of vertices here can be considered to be n and the number of edges you know that for a spanning tree it will be v minus 1 or any kind of tree and in a dense graph it can go to v square so i since i am considering the worst case scenario so i will be taking v square which is n square so in this case the time complexity for each of the dfs call can go to order of n square right now if you look at uh, the queries we have q number of queries and each of the dfs call will be v plus e that means n square therefore the total time complexity will be q times of n square right and the space complexity will be order of n square because of the adjacency list right so this technique works well if q is less than equals to n so for small number of queries uh, we can follow the dfs or the bfs technique and this will be optimal but what if the queries are large in number that means queries are greater than n and the number of queries can be huge then in that case we can do certain pre-processing so that each of the query can be solved in order of one time only if we have done pre-processing so the pre-processing will take order of n cube time but after doing that you can serve each of the query in one order of one time therefore the time complexity for the optimal approach with high number of queries will be n cube plus q and that is the floyd warshall approach and let's now look at the floyd warshall approach so floyd warshall approach will be good for large number of queries in this case, I am taking the same example where we have six nodes and this is the adjacency list which you can build. Now, if you already know the Floyd Warshall, then I hope you can make the all pair shortest path matrix. So this matrix here will be showing what is the short uh, shortest path from any of the source node to any of the destination node, right? So if, if I say that here the value is one, this one indicates that the shortest path from three to two is one. Now in this case there is no distance value so I will be taking each of the edge weight to be 1 which is 1 hop. Okay so each of the edge weight I am assuming to be 1. So in that case if I find out that shortest path between 3 and 1 is 2 this means that from 3 you can take 2 hops to reach to 1. You can take 2 hops to reach to 1 right. So that is the meaning. Now if you consider what is the meaning of this infinity like all these infinity values then if, if I just take an example of 1 comma 4 from source node 1 to destination node 4 if the value is infinity this means if you start a dfs call from 1 then you will never be able to reach to 4 that is why it is infinity so all the infinity values says about unreachable nodes right so if a query comes let's say 3 comma 1 and if you get a value infinity from the given uh, apsp that means all pair shortest path then you will say that 3 is not a prerequisite of 1 
But if you get a value smaller than infinity, then you will say that it is reachable. So for this three comma one, go to this uh, row three and uh, column one, you will see two. So this means it is reachable. So that is why it is a non-infinity value. You will return true or uh, true. Now for two comma three, go to two and uh, column number three, you will see that it is infinity. So that is why you will return false. You can also check it out. From two, you cannot reach to three, right? It is not possible. For five comma one, go to five comma one. It is infinity. So you return false. From five, you cannot reach to one. For four comma five, you go to four and uh, you go to this column number five. So this is infinity. This you will return false. From four, if you start DFS, you cannot reach to five. Similarly, if you go for five comma four, go to five and go to this destination four, you will see one. So since this is non-infinity value, so you will return true. That means five is a prerequisite of four. If you go to two comma one, go to this row number two, column number one, and you see this is the value one. That means this is a non-infinite value. You return true. That means from two, I can reach to one by applying DFS. And so there is a path between the source and destination. And that is why the source is a prerequisite of the destination. This is the idea. So if you can find all pair shortest path, then definitely if there is a path between U and V, then the shortest path will be something less than infinity. And that is the idea for this entire problem. So I hope you have already uh, seen my Floyd Warshall video in order to understand these steps in detail. Now, as you already know that Floyd Warshall will be taking order of V cube time in this case order of N cube time and each of the query you can just look up the row and column directly the lookup on the matrix will be order of one and that is why each of the query will be solved in order of one. So this technique is good when the number of queries are greater than N for high number of queries. Okay. The DFS technique was good when a Q was less than equals to N for low number of queries. Now the space complexity in this case is n square for the all pair shortest path matrix and also n square for the adjacency list. So this is the entire approach and I hope you were able to understand it. Let's now look at the code. If you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months, then we have brought for you both the DSA and the system design live interview training program. The most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one on one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number. This is the standard Floyd Warshall code in this case I have taken integer maximum to be 10 to the power of 4 and uh, in the driver function check if, if prerequisites we are given the num courses prerequisites and the queries. So first I will be calculating the all pair shortest path matrix. So this is what is the distance matrix, the all pair shortest path. Now I will be setting all the self loop values to be zero. You can also set it to be infinity, right? Because there are no self loops and I will be building the adjacency list. So this is uh, just traversing through each of the edges and building the adjacency list. After that, I will be applying the Floyd Warshall. So, so this is the actual code of the Floyd Warshall update matrix. Whenever I find that the distance can be lowered, I will be adjusting the distance to the new distance, right? So I have already explained this in detail in my Floyd Warshall video. And after that, I will be iterating for each of the query and in the Floyd Warshall distance matrix, I will be checking if the distance is less than integer maximum, then it is reachable. So I will be returning true. That means U is a prerequisite of V. Otherwise, I will be pushing false for it and finally return the result. So I hope you were able to understand the Floyd Warshall approach and as well as the DFS and BFS approach. If you still have any doubt, then feel free to comment below and I'll try to help you as soon as possible. Like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.